and welcome back. Now this is going to be a very short video and it's all about connecting up your Arduinos to your Windows or Mac PC. Um, on the Arduino forum there are lots of questions about this. Um, people who are just starting off they don't quite get how they connect this up. Yes they can see the socket, they can put a plug in it but then they get a bit lost after that. So let's look at how you connect your Arduino to your PC, find out which port it's on and how you then find out which other port it's on if you move it from one USB socket to another. Right, first things first. Today, most Arduino boards come with a, a CH340G USB to serial converter. Now on this Arduino clone board, if I can get it close enough to the camera, there's the actual chip itself and you can probably just make out... How do I have a magnifying glass here? Let's see if this helps. There, that chip there is a CH340G and that is your USB to serial converter and it's all on board here, this is why it's got a socket, all very easy. Older boards used to have an FTDI chip on it, now I don't have any boards like that left lying around but I do have a Arduino Pro Micro, so this is an Arduino Pro Micro board, it doesn't have any kind of USB to serial conversion on board so I have to use an external board like this one here. So this one's FTDI, um, you can probably just about make it out on that writing there, I'm hoping, I hope it's not upside down, let me just double check. Right there you can see quite clearly it says FTDI on the top, this is a slightly older technology and funnily enough more expensive which is why manufacturers have all moved away to the CH340G, but if you do have an Arduino with this or you have a serial board like this, oh look it even says it on the back. Uh, you'll need the FTDI driver. Um, so identify your chip first and now we're going to have a look about where you can find drivers for them if you need them. The chances are if you use a modern operating system like Windows 8 or 10 and I think even Windows 7 it just goes and finds them, there's nothing to do. But we'll have a look on the internet to find out where you can get those drivers and how easy it is to install them and then find out which port you're on. Right, let's go over to the computer screen. So here we are on the computer screen, now I've done a quick search for FTDI driver and of course top of the list was from FTDI chip themselves, although funnily enough that's not the best place to go. If you notice here there's a PDF, FTDI driver installation for Windows 7, now that also applies to 8 and even 10, although as I say your computer will probably find these drivers without you having to do very much at all. So let's have a look at this PDF very very quickly because it is simplicity itself. Now here's um, a fairly simple straightforward way of doing it covers absolutely everything you want to know and possible errors you might get um, not that uh, you should get any to be quite honest um, it does go through it in some detail so I'm just skimming through here because if you need the FTDI drivers it will be very simple to install these and it tells you where to get them from and how to install them more to point how to make sure that you've got them connected to the right device uh, which I'll show you in a minute now I did a similar search for CH340G driver, had a look at this one that came up, how to use cheap Chinese Arduinos, blah blah blah, and that article here, quite useful, it comes up with, um, there we are, so that's from uh, December 2014, you might think it's a little bit out of date, but I can assure you this is exactly what um, you need to do, even tells you where the Mac OS X drivers are, so basically you click on these links, download them, run the setup or it might even do that automatically and then your computer will at least know about the device you're plugging in, it won't come up with unknown, unknown device. So um, I'll put links to these on the bottom of this video, it's a one time installation and uh, then you're on your way. So let's have a look now then what happens when we plug in a device, so I'm going to first of all plug in this one here which is a full size Arduino Uno clone and that's got the CH330 uh, driver, I'm going to plug that in and we're going to have a look at Device Manager. Now Device Manager is where you need to go and have a look at your ports. So having loaded this I'll give you a quick um, trick on how to get to Device Manager with what's just one click otherwise you have to navigate through certain menus we don't want that so look at your ports and there we can see look it's already installed USB serial CH340 and I'm on COM6 today if you keep your device plugged into the same port either on your hub or your computer that will not change unlikely to anyway if you keep moving it about 
then that port number will change and then when you fire up your Arduino you'll find that you can't upload to your Arduino because it's trying to upload via the wrong port. So here's your Arduino screen, you look at tools, ports, now here it's listed two ports because that's what I do actually have available if you look in, in my port cell, I've got uh, COM port 3 and 6, 3 has got absolutely nothing to do with Arduino so we totally ignore that and it is in fact COM6 that we're interested in so in tools you simply go here and make sure that COM6 is checked and as you can see it's already checked because I haven't moved the port in which I plugged into the Arduino so that's that bit done now how do you get to device, device manager really quickly because you might need to do this often right the simplest way bring up this here this is um, Windows Explorer you need to go to first of all Windows on your C drive usually your C drive anyway go to Windows then go to System32 double click that now in here you're looking for something called device manager which is this one here it's the one ending MSC because that's the one that appears as a little, little widget double click that and it will fire it up however what I suggest you do is if you right click this and drag a copy to your desktop as I'm going to show you here so you right click as I'm doing now you're dragging it out to your somewhere in your desktop an empty space release there we are now you can see it says copy move create you certainly don't want to move it don't do that you don't want to copy it although it wouldn't be the end of the world if you did basically create a shortcut here there it is there's my shortcut and if I double click that now it takes me straight to that window it just appeared on the other monitor that's why it didn't appear straight away and that's how you get to device manager that's how you look at your ports and that is your USB serial port that's the one you're looking for to find out where your Arduino is connected to here COM6 could be another so if I plug in also my FTDI driver which will be obviously on a different port because I've plugged it into the hub on it goes well there we are look now that one just says you can see there USB serial port is on COM4 now it doesn't mention FTDI I know it's on these, these it's only the CH340 that actually mentions it by name so you won't actually see the words FTDI anywhere but that's COM4 so this little one here is now on COM4 and this big one is on COM6 that is how you do it and if you can't find it if you're uploading a sketch and it says oh I, I couldn't upload I couldn't get hold of COM22 or whatever funny value it's trying to use this is how you find out which port it's actually connected to all right so simple I'm going to put links to those uh, useful articles that I found on the internet on the bottom of this video as a comment or possibly in the description have a look and uh, that should at least get you going and make sure you can connect your Arduino to your Windows or Mac PC at any time. All right. So that was it, a quick roundup on how to get the drivers installed, how to find your device manager and how to find out which ports these are on, uh, whether it's an FTDI chip or a, a CH340G, makes absolutely no difference. Hope this gets you on your way and thanks for watching. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Remember, you can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.